This is Covey knowing that we're going camping. <laughs> she is not going to be left behind. She's been sitting there all morning. <laughs> yes, haven't you, Covey? Yeah. You want to go hunting? You want to go bird hunting? Yeah, we're going. Yeah, we're going. Pretty soon. Almost done packing. I want to thank you for all the help. Yeah, good girl. Okay, hey, hey, oh, wait, I know, you're in a hurry, <laughs> we're all in a hurry, let's just calm down, take your time, yeah, that girl, well, obviously Cubby's in a big hurry, opening day of forest grouse season in Idaho, what we want to do this year is get Cubby to point every upland game bird species in Idaho and take one over her, so it's a, a lot of guys will do that. It's kind of a silly thing, but it's kind of fun because you can explore a new country, find new birds, and, of course, notch your belt. <laughs> so I've got a, a Franke in a 16-gauge, which I have never hunted with before. A couple of times I borrowed a Keppel, but it'll be fun to use this for this one. We're going to try to get a spruce grouse, and we might pick up blue grouse and rough grouse in here, but spruce is a tough one. So that's goal number one. We're at about 7,000 feet, and that's where they start to peer. So, never been here before. We're about to be, aren't we, Covey? Okay, go ahead. Let's lock her up and go find the birds. Well, here's a good sign. Mountain ash berries. Grouse love these. As soon as you get up into the elevation, we start to pick these up. Rough grouse, blue grouse. I would assume spruce grouse. I haven't taken the spruce grouse since probably 1984 in Alaska. <laughs> Every time I find one out in this country, I've got a guest with me, and I let them take it because it's such an unusual species. So I've got a little trickle of creek running down through here. Got water. Got food. It's a little bit over cowed, but we're starting to get into some thicker brush where the cows haven't been hammering it too much, so we should pick up some birds. Whoa, Charlie. You grab that. Well, this was kind of a surprise. I This thing came flying down the mountain, right over the top of Covey, and then over the top of me. It's a, a big old blue grouse. Looks like a mature male. You can see by all the white feathers around it. And there's its tympanic membrane right there on its neck. So we're getting into him, but it's a big old blue. It fell right in the creek and in the mud, and it looks terrible, but I suspect it'll eat pretty well. This is pretty good looking bluegrass habitat. <sighs> Fairly dry ridge with big mature trees. Fairly open, but then you get down toward the drainage and it gets real thick. You'd expect to pick up rough grouse down in here. Right, Cubby? <sighs> See how nasty it gets with these alders? Getting through this stuff. <sighs> yeah. This is why rough grouse and blue grouse and spruce grouse hunting is not all that popular. It's high, it's steep, and it's thick. Not real sporting as far as getting a lot of classic shooting. Well, let's just try it. Let's just try it, Cubby. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I don't know. Should have maybe gone around. bird flushes now it's got it made yeah we're breaking into the clear a little bit really looking like classic blue grouse habitat big dug firs and pea pines that'd be ponderosa pine and fairly open lots of big logs they like to sit on 
Yeah, it's just classic stuff, but look at how steep it is. <sighs> Got your work cut out for you in blue grouse country. Well, up at 7,400 feet now. Look at the size of that. <laughs> it's a dug fur. Can't appreciate it with a camera, but that is a massive, massive tree. Well, my mission when I started was to get a spruce grouse, maybe pick up a blue grouse and a rough grouse, <laughs> but it turned into a mission to get to 8,000 feet. <laughs> and we're up to 8,040, 50 feet here. And up in the fir trees, it's getting pretty thick, uh, but small. And this should be spruce grouse habitat. So Kelby and I will keep looking. But man, since that blue grouse an hour ago, we just really haven't found anything. Bit of a mystery here on a fir tree. <sighs> Wonders. Somebody's blaze mark, but there are no ax marks or anything on this. And then you think maybe a bear, but there are no claw marks anywhere. And then I think elk. They will get to that cambium layer. But that's a pretty good sized tree for that. But that could be it. It sure looks like it when you get up in here. The way that's gnawed down looks like teeth. So they were liking that. I don't know, it looks pretty turpentinish to me. <laughs> but we are on some elk trails up here. Bird sign. <laughs> looks like somebody had a good nesting here. Back down along the creek now and flushed one grouse I couldn't get a shot at. So they seem to be concentrating along the water, which doesn't surprise me one bit. Here's Covey working up back there. We'll keep trying. Well, there's one new trick we're going to pull on this hunt. We're going to have a smoothie. <laughs> Road camping with a smoothie. I don't know. That's a new one. It's a pretty cool little thing here. I just got, and so just to prove I just got it, Blend Jet 2, there's the box. They want me to check that thing out. I don't have the strawberries, the peaches, the bananas, the kiwis, and the blueberries in here, but I've got some milk, and for campers, they provide the packet with all the freeze-dried stuff in it, so let's just give it a try. <laughs> what do you think, Covey, you want some? Protein powder, hey, build muscle. We'll need muscle if we go back up to 8,000 feet again, won't we? Yeah. That was a long climb, buddy. A long climb. It doesn't look like the grousiest area in the world. Well, let's see what happens. Got to go in now, guys. Ooh, Covey, this is something new. Yeah. I guess that's mixed. Huh. And you're supposed to drink it right out of the container. I guess we can do that. Got a little bit of powder left in there. Ah, not bad. Mm, mm, mm. A smoothie. Ha! I, I can tell it's not 1970 anymore. <laughs> Yeah, what do you have? Did you retrieve a bone? What a good dog. Give me a... Come on. What? Sit. Sit. Whoa. Sit. Sit. Good. Give. Give. Fish. Champion bone dog. Yay, Cubby. Now put some feathers on it, will ya? Put some feathers on it. You're such a bad dog. Let's go. Come on, dog. Come on, Kelly.
Oh, good girl. Right here. Come. Yeah. Good girl. That's there. Nice one, Cobby. Good point, girl. Good point and good retrieve. Nice hen, I think, or a young. Could be a young cock, but it looks like a hen. This is actually a dusky grouse. We used to call all them blue grouse, but they've determined that there are two different species in the West. One over on the coast that is called the, uh, let me think, dusky grouse. Oh, shoot, I forgot the name of that one. At any rate, this is now officially the dusky grouse. And Covey made a beautiful point down here in the thick stuff. And it went through a bit of an opening right here, and I got it. So the 16 gauge and the Covey, we've got our blue grouse. We've got to get the Covey pointing at spruce grouse, and that's going to be a tough one. Put the tail on this guy. There's the undertail. The males will spread that fan out, and they've got a real dark sort of a slate gray-blue color. But you can see why they calling them dusky grouse now. Kind of a dusky color to them, not really blue. And classic grouse, feathers clear down. And then they've got these little spicules on the, on the feet there. They'll uh, in the winter time get bigger and they kind of act like snowshoes, spread them out. But yeah, anytime you find a bird with the feathers clear down like that to the toenail, the, to the toes, that's a grouse. All right, Cubby, should we go find some more? See if this is just one of a brood, huh? Bunch of young ones that were born this year. Wow. The girl child, you found him. Man. It's like jungle warfare hunting these things. Oh. In the muck. It's beautiful habitat. Oh. Ready? Looks like another young of the year bird when it got up. And I saw that dark blue tail going. I thought it was a big old bale, but just another young of the year. Prime eating though. New grouse are in here. Beautiful habitat, nice and wet. They haven't had cows in here. It's not all beat up and chewed up and dried up. Lots of bogs, but I was surprised how deep that creek was back there. I thought this little seep was the creek, but this is nothing. I have to get six feet down into that creek. It's just roaring down here. Nobody found it, fetched it out from underneath that dead spruce or dug fur. All right, three birds already. What do you think? Should we get get done for a while, take a break, have some lunch? You know, we're pretty lucky to get these birds considering how thick it's covered. I mean, early season, obviously, it's going to be green and thick, and it's always a problem. But the birds are young yet. No one has shot into them, so there's, the numbers are really high. And every once in a while, you'll find an opening like that. We just got real lucky. Three points and three birds. Well, two points and three birds. That one thing flying over early in the morning. But I am really impressed with the numbers. And I see one poking around in a tree over there, believe it or not. It's up in a maybe, looks like it might be a mountain ash tree. And it's got the branches moving like crazy as it hunts around in there for berries. But getting over there is about impossible. It's just a jungle in here. So I think we'll be satisfied with these three birds for now. And then this evening, we'll... Uh, Continue looking for that spruce grass. What do you think, Cubby? You like? Hmm? Get hungry? Get off of you know, some people claim that you can't eat meat the day you shoot it. I don't know why not, because it's always tasted pretty good to me. 
and it's quite tender, especially with these birds of the year. So we're getting them all stripped up, to get the shot out. You can see a few holes here. You have to hunt the shot. Yeah, looks like we got her. We'll just strip them up. My wife likes to dredge these in flour, but when she's not around, I just do them straight up. Get some oil, get it really hot, really hot. Drop these in and you don't need to heat them for about a minute per side. Keep them just kind of on the rare side. They're so tender and you don't need a lot of seasoning. There's just a delicate, delicate meat. Blue grouse are not quite as white and delicate as a rough grouse, but pretty close, especially the young ones. And we'll get them all floured up here for Betsy's favorite style. And we'll hit the hot pan, which is swimming, it looks like, pretty good. Like to see that oil swimming around in there before we dive in. And we're going to cook it hot, drain it a little bit on some paper towels, and we're in business. The only downside to this is the splattery mess. And I try to control that with a bit of a lid there, but mostly ends up being a cleanup afterward. Oh yeah. Couple more drumsticks here, kids. Thighs and drumsticks, that's the dark meat. In camp, we just do it really simple. No flour, throw them on the oil, heat them and eat them. If I ever do a recipe book, that's going to be the title. Heat it and eat it, because <laughs> that's about all I do. All right, boys and girls, guys and gals. Listen, next week, spruce grouse. Can you remember that? Spruce grouse. No more dusky grouse, maybe a rough grouse, but spruce grouse. We're going after spruce grouse. <laughs>